What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Buccaneers franchise. We have episode 38 today, and we again are coming off of a loss. It is two weeks in a row now that we have had some pretty rough games. And I know that last video, I forgot to go over the stats from that game, but we'll go and take a look at them quick before we get past into the next week. And um, yeah, it was a pretty abysmal performance by Tyler Chambers once again. He had a 46.4 rating. It was bad. 41% on his completion percentages. He was, he was all over the place. It was definitely a performance that we want to forget about. And um, even at the running game, they torched us, which was very surprising considering we did all of that work to try and stop the run. And then they just ran it right up the middle on us with like without any issue. Brees Hall had 100 yards. Dalvin Cook averaged over seven yards a carry. Rashad White had a decent day more towards the second and third quarter. First quarter didn't seem to go all that well for us, but he did end up having a decent performance at the end, over five yards a carry on the day. Uh, receiving, there's another one, Garrett Wilson, man. He he got us, he got us good. Eight for 106, two touchdowns, and it was just a, uh, I mean, you, I don't even wanna mention the abysmal performance that we had on offense. It was, it was so bad, and there really wasn't much better stuff to talk about on defense. Um, we had a couple of sacks, but yeah, that, that pretty much sums up. We had three sacks, it looks like, and that was literally all of the defensive stuff that we did all day long. It was, I, I'm not looking forward to having to relive that game at all. So, so let's just move on and forget. Okay. That game is in the past. It was a good learning experience, hopefully for Tyler Chambers. And we are on to the next game i do think that i want to sim a couple of weeks uh not that i don't want to watch the saints game uh, another divisional matchup but right now we are in a bad spot and we have a two game lead over the the two below us the panthers and the saints in this in the division and i really want to get to week eight because that'll also allow me to start working on the spreadsheet for you guys for the draft class so we can get to knowing who to expect to see in the class and also maybe get us another upgrade or two for Tyler Chambers to allow me to get him out of that improviser state because right now it is hurting him bad. <laughs> and I uh, definitely want to get him out of that. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to start. I'm going to go ahead and get us to week seven and we'll see what happens at that time. We'll also be able to get our national scout set right away, which is good. Oh, wow. And they lost again. So now they're one in five. Okay. So yeah, well, I'll definitely sim pass this week. And um, I, I know for sure we're going to get at least through week eight. We might even get to week nine. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take care of this weekly strategy. Just get that stuff out of the way. And then I will see you guys after I sim. All right. Well, we at least bounced back. We didn't get to see it, but we bounced back against the Saints. 24 to three was the final to that game. We'll check that out in just a second. First, I want to make sure we get national focus taken care of. Let's go ahead and take care of that right away. And we already know it's going on quarterbacks. That focus scouting corners. Boom. There we go. Chloe Ray is going to take care of that secondary for us. And that also means now that everybody's at 50. So now I can go ahead and I can finally start putting together the, um, the draft class spreadsheet. And also, um, I'm going to put down in the description below the contracts template that I have that I, I used to use for a, a league that I was in. Um, it's already pre, you know, worked in there to sort of just, you put in the numbers and it'll figure it out for you. You don't have to put the full number in because it's so easy. Like if it's a million, I just put one, you know, if it's 20 million, I put 20. If it's 20.5 million, I put 20.5, you know, th that kind of situation. If it's 700,000, I put 0 0.700. If it's 70, put 0 0.07, and it'll just calculate all of your contracts. It'll tell you how much you're spending, how much, how many players you have under contract. There's a spot on the bottom where you can put like, I have it put in to where it'll automatically add up your total. And then if you put in the amount of the salary cap, which thanks to my last video that I put out yesterday, sorry, is when you guys see this, it'll be Tuesday. I recorded it yesterday. But um, the follow-up to the salary cap, the team management video, the if you put in the numbers that i have in there for what the salary cap is each year it'll automatically tell you what you can expect to have going forward 
and then you do have to manually put in like cap penalties and things like that but overall it, it's a pretty simple thing to use if you want to i'll put it in the description below along with the draft spreadsheet um i can't guarantee that it'll be fully done by the time you guys watch this video and click on the link if you do but i will be working on it now that we are at this stage so now that we are here let's just take a look around and see what we can find out about some of these players obviously quarterback is not something we're going to be looking at chances are we're not going to be looking at halfbacks either uh or fullbacks um wide receiver is not a huge concern of mine as i've mentioned we do have some good information about abdul clayton okay so all of his numbers look like they're gonna be pretty good great to elite great to elite um only thing is speed solid to good and strength good to great We've got a lot of a's awareness impact run block finesse lead block pass block finesse that's a really solid left tackle candidate i'm gonna have to keep him in mind and then what about dorian winslow right behind him 6'5, 323. He is 23, though. His physical rating's definitely nowhere near that of Clayton's. He's got A awareness, A impact, A lead. Pass block finesse is a C. Okay, so I think it's safe to say that Clayton is by far the better of the two. I would love to learn a little bit more about some of the interior linemen, but it would really come down to if one of them really blows me away. Oh, okay. <laughs> Like uh, Jared Greer here, potentially. 6'3", 318, he's 21. This guy can easily play at a guard position. He's got really, really good physicals as well. The only thing is jumping. That's not great to elite. Oh, and agility is solid to good. But if you're playing interior, that's not as important, to, at least in my opinion. Uh, he's got awareness, impacts, run block, all A's. Uh, lead block A to C. Okay, this is a really good candidate for potentially maybe um, looking into further. Again, I'm not a big fan of taking interior linemen in the first round, so I don't know if it's somebody that I would really take with a first round pick. And then we don't know a lot about Isaiah Starks. He's 22, 6'6", 314. He has, okay, so he is great to lead all the way down the board too. A lead, A pass block, finesse, B pass block. A to C and run block and run block power, impact and awareness. So he might be right up there with Clayton. So both top tackles might end up being players we could target. And because, I mean, we have Justin Jones right now. He is definitely not a long-term solution at the position. We definitely need to have, we, we have to have a younger player in there soon to start to build up or to just take over altogether. It's not like his overall is very high. Um, so, I mean, tackle, even though it's not something I really focused on, is something that I would consider, depending on where the pieces fall. Defensive end and, de and defensive tackle are ones that I really want to focus on, because Kansi hasn't really gone off this year like I hoped he would um, in his third season. And we need, we're going to need depth regardless of how the rest plays out. Timmy Baker hasn't really looked that good. He definitely has not looked as good as he did uh, years prior. And, you know, I'm almost wondering if down the line, this defense might be in for a shift to a 4-3. Because Timmy Baker could be a really, really solid three technique. For all we know, Kansi could be as well. And then we'd have Jermaine Johnson come down onto the edge. We could still build up Derek Green a little bit. I don't think I would want to put Frankie Luvu on the line. He's just not really big enough to be a, a down lineman on defense. He's okay at his outside linebacker spot, but if he wanted to be, you know, if we go to a 4-3, being a defensive end, I just don't think he has the right build for that. So it, it would come down to what happens later on. There's not too many guys on this side of the things. Let's see about this side. Austin Josephson is probably going to end up being a beast. We have 75 on him, but he's also top five. I highly doubt we're going to be up in that area to be able to draft a guy in the top five, even though we've had some struggles this season. Yeah, he's got great to elite down the board, except for Excel. And then his skills, he's got A awareness, B in finesse and power, B play rec, A tackle, A to B in impact, injury, pursuits. Yeah, so this guy is going to be just an all-around presence on the D-line, and he should definitely be a defensive end. Probably in a, a 3 4, given that he's 279 pounds. I mean, he could probably get away with being a defensive end in a 4 3 just because he does have the finesse moves as well with the power moves. 
Yeah, I would love to be able to get a guy like Austin Josephson, especially considering I feel like our defensive line is where the most question marks are at right now on our defensive ends. But uh, yeah, that's that's wishful thinking at this point. Calvin Castle is a guy that could be an option for us. He's got A, play rec, A, impact, B, power, his finesse is going to be a little bit lower, but he's also a bigger guy too. He is, uh, what is it? 307. So he's 307 at 64. He's definitely a 3-4 end. And if he was to play in a 4-3, he's definitely going to be your defensive tackle, of course. But he does have some pretty good ratings for round one to two. I mean, if this is a guy that's there at the beginning of the second or even the late first, if everything else falls apart, I mean, I would definitely consider it. His ratings aren't the greatest, but he has some good ones, right? Good to great excel. His change of direction also good to great jumping. Speed is, is bad, but his strength, great to elite. So that's going to be his spot is the power that he has. Depending on what his block shedding is, he could be a great player for a block shedding and, and run stopping type of player. And we do have some information on defensive tackles. And um, so we have 100% on a few of them. Trent Molden is 100%. And he is actually lower on the totem pole than what his projection is. Andrew Quintana is right on the cusp there. Um, going down here, Deion Jones is actually rated above what his projection is. So if we could get him, I can imagine like back end of the second, I probably wouldn't risk it going into the third, especially with his high talent. And that still might be a stretch, but that could be an option for us on the D line. And then looking here, he's 6'6", 309, 21. His physicals are pretty good. He has great to elite in acceleration, speed, and strength. Decent to solid in change of direction and jumping. And then he's got good to great in agility. And then as for his attributes, um, F injury, which does suck, but I, I, I haven't seen a story bad about him. So I'm not too concerned. B awareness, B block shed, B finesse move, B impact, A's in tackling, stamina, and play rec. The only thing he's lacking in is power moves. But if we wanted to put him at defensive end, that might be a better fit for him. So that's something to consider. Plus, he has great to lead in speed and excel where where he could actually transition to an outside position easier than some other defensive tackles. And then we also have Zach Goodson down here who also projects a little bit better. Instead of around three to four, he is around two to three talent. He has a few Ds though. I'm not sure what I think about that. On power and tackle, his finesse move is the only thing he's really good at. I wonder though, is it, does he have good play rec? You know, what, let's see. Oh, wow, okay. So he has B awareness, A play rec, A finesse and hit power, Ds and in injury, tackling and power moves. Okay, so the, the hard part is, is for a three technique in pass rushing situations, he's probably going to be ideal. But for everything else, he's got a lot of holes in his game, which obviously if you're drafting somebody in the mid rounds, you should expect. Um, and then we have another one, Keelan Burrow, day three projection with a round three to four talent. Looks to be the same situation with him, sort of average with block shedding, finesse move is good. Our move is not good. He does have decent physicals though as well. Play rec is a B, so this is, See, now this is the perfect type of player where I can take a flyer on later on in the draft and somebody that has enough with one or two attributes that we can work with them and really build them up to be something good. But this guy would definitely have to be a speed rusher. He has no power moves. We did not touch outside linebackers at all just because we, it wasn't a lot of them and it's not necessarily a need right now. Same with the inside linebackers. This will be like, if there's somebody really good, if we see a story that we can't pass up, I'll have to do the extra scouting with them. Um, and that's okay with me. You know, I think I think we know where our needs are right now. We have 55% on quite a bit of corners here. Um, 65 on some others, cause we doubled up. So we'll, we'll come back and look at this. I will start getting this list filled out though. So we have a better understanding of, of where things are at. Uh, but for now, this is this is what we're working with. All right, it is time for me to do the 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 weeklies and also the week eight story generator. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put it in this video. All right. And I've asked you guys before one or two of you will let me know, but I need you guys to let me know down below. Do you want me to add this in all the time? Do you want to see exactly how who I upgrade and who I don't? 
and then you know or if you like dude i really don't give a damn let me know about that as well please so let's go ahead and get started all right so the first one is hits taking a toll on quarterback essentially what that means is you, you there's not a role for some reason but all you do is if you go here you go to most sacks taken and whoever has the most sacks has their sense of pressure lowered by one so unfortunately it's jamario weathersby which sucks because he was having a good season and it felt like you know things were going to go good for the commanders for once and they'd have a good quarterback going forward not to say that it's going to completely derail his career but he was at average now he's going to go down to oblivious so i don't know how that's going to make him play but it's definitely not a good thing um so yeah there's the first one the next one is an entire team and it's players buy in so you go to the top ranked offense and top ranked defense if you roll an eight or better so it looks like the offense had a four on the roll and i know you guys don't see this i just it, there's really nothing to look at it's just a, a spreadsheet um and then i mean it, it is what it is i'm just reading it off as i go so players buy in four top ranked offense it doesn't count who would have got it if we rolled a better one that's what i want to know oh it would have been the jets okay and then for the defense though we rolled a 12 which means the entire defense of the top ranked team is going to get plus three to awareness and that is the browns wow okay so the browns defense getting a pretty big increase i'm gonna go ahead and take care of that and then um we'll come back for the last few all right so the rest of them did not meet the criteria for the role i just finished the browns and the last one that did was called leadership all right, so to figure out top ranked player on the top ranked team, I'm going to have to go to here, create a character. And if you don't, if you're doing this online, you can just pretend to retire and create a new character and just look through the teams to see who's the best and then just back out. Um, so overall, we'll just look at overall. So 85 right now, 85. Anybody over an 85? Oh, Chiefs 87. Shocker. Nope. Oh, okay, so it's Chiefs and Niners right now. Anybody better than that? Does not appear to be. Nope. Okay, so now it's let's go off of offense and defense comparison. 89 offense, 85 defense. 87 overall offense, 89 defense. I feel like the 49ers should get that because between the two of them, they actually have a higher overall. I'm not sure how they're not an 88, given that. But um, yeah, so we're going to go with the 49ers. This one is a very difficult one to get, but if you get it, it's very, very good. So this one, roll eight or better, and it was actually an eight. The top ranked player gives boost of 10 awareness to everyone in their position group and reverse preseason bust if on team. So Fred Warner is the best at his position or on the team which means all of these linebackers are going to get plus 10 to awareness and nobody had the bust category on here so i'm going to go ahead and take care of that right away all right and now what is here is what it looks like afterwards so graham went up to a 71 and jadarius sawyer went up to a 67. all right so i feel like awareness is is awesome right it's great but i also feel like play recognition is one of the most important parts of a defensive player and since it was on defense i did plus five on top of the plus 10 to awareness to play rec so all in all, they got plus 10 awareness, plus five play rec. I don't know. That's, that's just the way I see it. I mean, play recognition is, it goes hand in hand on defense for me. So that that's the way I decided to do it. I'll have to find something else to do for offense. If the offensive guys are the ones who get it the next year. That's all the stuff for the midseason rolls. So that was sort of my process. I just go through the list. I see if it counts. If it does, I go through it and do it. Now, of course, the one at the beginning of the season is much bigger. One thing I did as well is I went through and I did an auto reorder for depth charts for the whole league. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and I am actually going to sim pass this week because I want the league to be reset. There's players that have moved up. There's players that have moved down. And essentially the game wasn't doing any of that. So I don't want teams to be at a, def a disadvantage. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm just going to have to check my depth chart every week, unfortunately because the game just sucks and can't figure out how to do it. The, the weird thing is it worked in this game for about 10 years and then all of a sudden it just didn't work anymore. And they're like, oh, well, instead of fixing it, we're just gonna add another button and not fix it at all and just make it even more inconvenient. So that's Madden in a nutshell. So 
we may get to the Patriots. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to sim pass this week. I think we're going to end up watching the Patriots game or we'll just get all the way to week 10 and take on the Falcons since that's a, a very, very important game for us. Right now we're tied for first. So we'll see where it stands next week and then we'll, we'll go from there. So let me go ahead and take care of the uh, training stuff again and then I will see you guys after that. All right, so we made it to week 10. <laughs> I know, a lot of simming. There was a reason for this. One, we were on a really good streak in the sim. And I also wanted us to see this Falcons game because I feel like we need some payback, okay? This was the team that sort of started our downfall. We were off to a good start. We ran into the Falcons and we let Desmond Ritter look like an absolute maniac. And I want us to be able to get some revenge. And it also just so happens to be a situation where we are both sitting at six and three, and this game is for the division right now, which is a pivotal moment in this season because it is week 10. We're going into the second half of the season. We're already into the second half of the season, I should say. And um, yeah, I, I'm excited for this. And no, there was no reason to stop in week eight. There was no reason to stop in week nine because I didn't want to trade for anybody. I feel like I like where the draft stock is right now. There isn't a position that we don't either have a quality person in or somebody we're trying to learn more about to warrant trading for another position, right? To, for a different player. So I just wanted to stay put with who we had. I didn't have anybody I really wanted to trade. And we're just gonna hold off into the off season and see what happens. But we're here in week 10. We have like three games to go over, which we won all of them, by the way. Six and three. Crazy. Atlanta, they're still crazy. They're six and three. This could be a potential playoff matchup if both of these teams can continue on the trajectory that we are on right now, along with the Falcons. We also have a bunch of upgrades to do because I've been doing every training, you know, week to week. First, we're going to follow the normal protocol. We'll go and look at the Falcons. Um, we're going to take a pit stop just to check out the stats from the games, and then we'll we'll get to things. So first, let's take a look at the last three games. So first up was the win against the Saints. It was a big win for us, 24-3. to And in that game, Tyler Chambers definitely turned it around. 130.4 rating, 149 yards. Not the most yardage, but he had three touchdowns. He protected the ball, and his completion percentage was wildly better. So a big game for Tyler Chambers. We kept Peter Cartwright their second year quarterback to a 51.9 rating. He did not have a very good day. Zero touchdowns, one interception, 51% completion. Rushing wise, Rashad White had himself a hundred yard performance. It wasn't a great one. He didn't have a touchdown, but he got to the century mark. Daquan Samuel adding 12 for 53. That is nice to see. Um, let's see, receiving Chris Olave, seven for 75. James Blake, six for 52 and a touchdown. Chris Godwin, three for 43. Rashad White did get a touchdown, though, through the air. Four catches, 22 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Taylor Wharton only had one catch, but it went for a touchdown. Defensively, let's see, do we have any sacks? We had three sacks, four sacks. Devin White, Frankie Louvu, Jermaine Johnson, and Najee Flowers. Guys, Najee Flowers is sort of turning into a, a very good hybrid safety. He's getting in with sacks. We've seen him play the run game. We've seen him play back in coverage. I'm really liking where Flowers is heading right now. His trajectory is going up. I mean, he's still only a 68 overall, so we'll see if he gets some upgrades coming up to make it to where we can actually maybe rely on him in the future. But right now, I'm really liking where he is, where he's at. And the one interception was for Devin White. Uh, we also had a forced fumble from Devin White, but we did not recover it. So we had only one turnover on the day, four sacks, not a bad performance. The next one was a stinker. 10 to seven was the final. We won it by three. And uh, Tyler Chambers had 163 yards, one touchdown, 57.1 completion, not a very good day. 16 to 29, oof. Rushing also didn't really get much there. It looks like it was a defensive showdown in this one. 20 for 67, nobody had a good day on the ground really. Stephon Diggs went crazy, though. Six for 147 and a touchdown. Godwin, four for 49. Trey Palmer, three for 35. So things are a little strange right now with the Sim, it seems. Uh, defense. Let's see for the sacks. We had one sack, and that was Jermaine Johnson. 
Um, interceptions, Tredavious White had one against us. Any forced fumbles? No. Okay, so not a very big day for statistics on the defense. And then the last one, another close one, 17 to 14 against the Patriots. And in this one, Chambers, once again, a little bit farther down in the passing yardage. I've noticed that out of him this season. He has not really had a lot of yardage, uh, but this one, he did take care of the ball a lot better. Um, Mac Jones, who right now is like the number two quarterback in the league. I wonder if he still is. Had 207 yards passing, no touchdowns, no interceptions. So actually a pretty decent day for all the quarterbacks that ended up playing. And it looks like Tyler Huntley even had to come in for a couple of plays. Oh, that's probably why. So it looks like Chambers was actually on a tear for a while. He probably got injured. And it was 11 pass attempts from Tyler Huntley. So Chambers leaving with an injury, he could have had maybe... You know, maybe he would have had all those stats, so maybe he could have had a 300-yard day, but unfortunately, he got hurt. Huntley had to step in, and he did a good job doing so. No scores, but he protected the ball, 9 of 11, 101 yards. You'll love to see it. Another rough day on the ground. J.K. Dobbins led the way for the Patriots, 16 for 59. Rashad White, 16 for 49. Uh, Mac Jones had a rushing touchdown. That's strange. Receiving, go Chris Godwin, 10 for 121 and two touchdowns. I sort of feel like Chris Godwin is starting to feel the age thing a little bit, guys. He has just not been himself this season. I mean, he's still clutch, right? He still makes plays when the ball gets to him. But it just, whether he's just, if Chambers is just struggling to find his receivers right now, which could be a very realistic thing, or maybe Godwin's just having a harder time separating, but when he does get the ball, he can make plays, as you see here. Mike Isecki, the leading receiver for the Patriots, 7 of 87. Taylor Wharton, 6 for 70. Trey Palmer, 4 for 54. And now let's see, on the defensive side, we had only one sack the entire day, and it was Josh Uchi. Wow, okay. Um, no interceptions on the day for either side, and no fumbles. Gotta love the sim. I also want us to take a look at the season stats and just see where things are at now. We did a big chunk of simming. We've watched six games, essentially, and now we've just simmed three. So a third of our season has been done for us. Tyler Chambers right now is sitting at 15 touchdowns, five interceptions, almost 2,000 yards. His completion percentage is where I'm struggling with the most right now. It's 58%, but I also feel like that has a lot to do with the fact that he's a young quarterback. He's got to learn how to do these things. It's going to be a while before he's you know, up to standard with what we're expecting. Uh, Rashad White on the season, 630 yards. Definitely a down year for him. I think this time last year, he already had 1,000 yards. Daquan Samuel, 274 and five touchdowns. Um, yeah, I mean, I like Rashad White. I really do. But he definitely hasn't been the same this year. Um, we'll see. Maybe, maybe things will change going forward. Chris Godwin, 41 catches, 545 yards, four touchdowns for him. James Blake right behind him with 434. Taylor Wharton, our third best receiver at 361. I do like how Trey Palmer has gotten involved. And again, I'm still a big fan of Nathan Givens and what he's been able to do. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this receiving core plays out, especially once it gets to the point that Chris Godwin might be hanging it up or, you know, just not re-signing with the team. He's in his ninth season. So he's definitely not a guy that we are going to have for a very long time. And then on the defense, I feel like we've had better individual performances this season than a team performance. Um, Frankie Luvu leading it with nine sacks right now, and then it drops off an absolute cliff. Jermaine Johnson with three and a half. I don't even know how that's possible. Guys, did we not have a game where Jermaine Johnson had like two sacks? And we just saw that he had sacks in at least two of the three games that we saw. Am I crazy? Maybe I am. But it's dropped off a cliff after Frankie Luvu. Devin White is below Johnson with three, and then Anthony Moore with two, Vea with one, along with Baker, Flowers, and Cansey. Interceptions, once again, I think this has been a lot better this year for us than it, has, than it was last year. Three interceptions for Carlton Davis, two for Devin White and Jamel Dean, and then one for Flowers, Neal, Winfield Jr., and Christian Izian. And then fumbles, last one, Devin White leading us with two, Carlton Davis and Ryan Neal each having one of their own. And out of those, we've only recovered one. So we're not doing a good enough job right now of rallying to the football and making sure that we're making them pay for not being careful with the football on defense. 
I don't want to look through all of this list right now because I've already, I've done a lot of talking in this and a lot of simming. So I really want to get to the game. I just want to see where our rookies are looking at like right now. So offensive player of the year. Yeah, nobody even close. Frankie Lou is in running for defensive player of the year along with Devin White. Okay, that's cool. Tyler Chambers is still leading the offensive rookie of the year. And that makes sense because we know that there are quite a few of the teams have not opted to, to start their quarterbacks until probably a little bit later in the season. They're rookies. And we know the rookies are going to get pushed to the top because just because the stats are abundant when it comes to the rookie quarterbacks. Uh, but we are seeing some, some good stuff. Pat Stevens finally on the board. Julian Magana is on the board as well for the Packers. Um, let's see. Defensive rookie of the year. Najee Flowers is down at number seven. That, I mean, is probably majority because of his pick six, that like 100 yard pick six. But hey, I'm not going to complain about it, man. He has actually shown a lot of potential this season. We are finally healthy, fully healthy. Vita Vea is back right now. No other injuries. Let's check out the Falcons. They are missing one player and it's Jesse Bates, the free safety. That is actually a big, big injury to them. I feel like we don't need to look at the... Falcons right now because we already know what they are. We just saw them a few episodes ago, it feels like. So we're not going to go through everybody on their team. So Desmond Ritter has had himself an up and down year, it looks like. Um, he's had quite a few good games. One, The week one game, the game against us, the follow-up with the Saints. But then the Packers, he had a 59.6 rating. Uh, the Dolphins, 77.9. And then last week against the Panthers, four interceptions. So there is a crack in the shield of Desmond Ritter. And um, hopefully we can continue to exploit that this week and do something good against them. And that now brings us finally to the weekly strategy. So we have this, upgrading players, and then finally it's game action. It's been a long video, I know, but it's um, I think it was needed. You know, we just seen a lot of games. We needed to look into some more information. And I think we definitely need to focus on the run. Last time, I think I tried to get fancy with it, if I'm not mistaken. And I think I called for... Actually, no. No. I was, I'm wrong. I went inside run last time. And I feel like this time around, I'm going to go for medium pass. It's very apparent that they want to establish the pass game. Desmond Ritter has been up and down all season. We want to try and limit them as much as possible. So we're going to go defend medium pass this week. I don't care what that thing says. It says number 20, the 25th best for passing. I don't care. We know what they did to us last time. And if it bites me, it bites me. But this is what I'm feeling right now. It's my gut decision. And then on offense, right now with Chambers being a little shaky, I feel like I want to lean on the run game a little bit. So I think I'm going to stick with, with this. I, I do. You know, they do have their secondary is just so good. Even with Jesse Bates out, they are just so good. So, yeah, we're going to go with run inside this week and hope that things go our way. And then to the weekly game plan. Yes, this one is important. We need to get after Desmond Ritter. We have to we have to get him rattled. Otherwise, like last episode, I don't think the last time we played them, I don't think we got many sacks on them and it ended up costing us dearly. Uh, this one, I think we're going to go for a lot of 24 points or less. We know they can put up points. And then 350 offensive yards, what we want to aim for. And then here, we are going to go for win turnover battle. We got to make sure our young guy is protecting the ball. And we want to definitely force some turnovers and some errant throws out of Desmond Ritter. So that's going to be our focus this week. Also, just a little heads up. I did make a couple of changes. Um, I have Cancy and Baker in here. I feel like Jermaine Johnson has already established himself now. And I brought in Najee Flowers because after that performance in the few weeks, I want to see what we can do with him. So I went ahead and I put him in. And these are the guys we're running with right now as our focus players. So you guys know the drill. I'm going to go ahead and do these again. Then I'll see you guys for upgrading all the players before the game. Oh, snap, guys. I finally got one. I got a dev increase. And it's for Rashad Barr. I, I just stopped right what I was doing. I wanted you guys to see this. Rashad Barr just got himself a dev upgrade. Wow. Okay. I, this is a, well, I always go in order. So like, it says he's hidden still, but he is, he was so, so we know he was star then, and he's going to be superstar now after this. Wow. I just wanted to stop so that you guys saw that right away. Didn't think anything funny was happening. Um, yeah, wow. So Rashad Barr 
in one season, I draft him as just a guy because he looked like he could fly, right? He was the first, he was the fastest running back. He was one of the best with agility. Took him strictly because of that. And in preseason, he ends up getting the luckiest roll ever for faster than advertised, which gives him plus five to speed and acceleration, which boosted him up to like a 98 speed, 99 speed. Same with acceleration. And now during his weekly training, we end up getting a dev increase to superstar for him. I mean, this guy might end up being the future of the running back position for us now, which I didn't expect to happen. But now it's like, you know, how can he not be, right? Crazy stuff. I just wanted to stop and tell, tell you guys that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish doing what I was doing with the rest of these guys, and then I'll see you guys after. All right, so we are finally here. We have a bunch of upgrades to do, and then we can finally get to the game. Wow. All right, first, Taylor Wharton. And last time, if I'm not mistaken, we did Deep Threat, and right now, I definitely need his short route running to start coming up a little bit, and his release. So I'm thinking... And it's tough because his release is up here at deep threat and slot. I mean, it, I, that is still released. So let's, let's just go slot here. I think that that would be a good one to do right now for him. Okay. And we get nothing <laughs> plus awareness, plus two to catch in traffic and plus one to medium route. Ryan Neal is going to get an upgrade. And I think I'm going to go to run support for him. Awareness, block shedding, three to man and two to tackle. Okay. Rashad White up next. His is easy. We just go to elusive back every time. And ball carrier vision, break tackle, carrying, change of direction and spin move. That's actually a pretty good upgrade. You got five different ones. And then we're going to Anthony Moore. And he's going to do, I'm going to do run stopper for him again. Yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to work that up, be a part of his game. Awareness, two to block shed, play wreck, and a tackle. Perfect. Jermaine Johnson, we're just going to hammer it home with speed rusher. He has been playing phenomenal this year. Awareness, finesse, pursuit, strength, zone. Okay, that's a good upgrade for him. Tyler Chambers. All right, we just did Scrambler. Tell me, please, this is going to get him at least to be a scrambler archetype instead of improviser. Oh, hell yeah, there we go. So that upgrade ended up getting him away from improviser. And now he's scrambler field general like he was when we drafted him. So I'm happy with that upgrade. And now here's his ratings at this point. Short accuracy looking real good. Medium looking good. He's, he's really developing well. We just need to get that awareness to start climbing a little bit, and then we're gonna be golden with, with Tyler Chambers. And now it's on to Kalijah Kansi. He hasn't been playing the best with Speed Rusher, so I'm gonna go Run Stopper again. I don't know if that's gonna be enough to flip him to Run Stopper. One block shed, Pursuit, and Tackle. No, he goes still up one with Speed Rusher, but okay, whatever. Um, We have Timmy Baker, and he is another one that has been playing well, but I want to get him the power rusher too. Okay, he went down in overall. I don't know how the hell that happens. This game sometimes is, is really weird. Um, but he does get the power rusher, so at least now he's evened out there. Nathan Givens is going to get another upgrade. He's had a pretty good season so far for what his expectations were at least. And I think we're going to just keep doing... Where is his ratings at? Short route needs work. Well, all of his route running really needs work. I think we're going to do slot for him. Yeah, we're going to do slot. Oh, that brought him up to a 76 with the TMP plus one. Three awareness, one catching, one short route. Donovan Knight gets one. We're going to go elusive for him. He looks really angry. Two awareness, ball carry vision, and two to juke. Good upgrade. Alec Patterson, finally. This guy, I feel like, hasn't had an upgrade all season. And he desperately needs him, because his power is, is very bad. So we're just going to go straight to power for him and hope that his passing... Pass protection, I should say, comes along with it. it well, it went up over well. Okay. Rashad Barr, our new superstar running back. 
I definitely need him his receiving back to get up there, but I'm hoping by doing elusive that that'll start climbing as well. So he gets two to awareness, one to carrying, one to change of direction, which does, okay, he gets up to 62. We definitely need him to be an all around back by the time it comes to the point of him being potential replacement for Rashad White. You have to remember White is not exactly 24 anymore. He's, I think he's 27 right now. I'll have to check afterwards, but I'm pretty sure he's 27. Maybe he's 26, going on 27. Uh, Christian Izian, and he has been doing really well as well. I'm going to go man coverage for him. That's the one area that he was lacking in a little bit. And we'll get two there, one man, one play rec, two to press. Okay. He's actually pretty decent corner for us. Jojo Dawkins is also getting one, and his is just really badly needing route running well, and catching. Yeah, I think we'll go slot for him as well. That jumps him up to a 70, and he'll get three to catching and one to short route. Najee Flowers gets another upgrade, and um, I think I'm still just doing... Well, I really want to get his zone up, though. If he ever has a chance of being a legitimate threat with this... Oh, man, but hybrid might really be the trick, too. Now, nah, let's go. We're, we'll go. We'll go zone. Yeah, we'll go zone for him here. Two awareness, one to zone. Okay. And then last but not least is Max Young, the right guard, and he needs agility, it looks like. Unblock finesse 69. Yeah, okay. We're going to go agile here. And that gets us... Pass block finesse plus two, run block one, and run block finesse one. Perfect. Here we go. We are going to get to start on offense this week. And I did have to make a little bit of a change to Tyler Chambers' gear because his helmet was starting to bother me, okay? The helmet he was wearing, the speed flex, sits so low it looks like he's blocking his eyes. And maybe that's why he was having a hard time finding targets downfield, right? Right? So we changed it to an F7. And now hopefully he can see better. There we go. First in 10, we're going to start in shotgun. We go right to Rashad White. Gets a little bit of a crease, a juke move, and he's free out to the 40. Big time run for Rashad White to open it up. And now we go to the big tight end set here with Samuel. He takes the handoff. He gets outside and trying to fight past the first defender. Second one comes in to bring him down after six. Nice strong running though to open up the game. And now we come out in another shotgun set. We're going to throw for the first time. Chambers, a quick one over the middle. Godwin open on the little dig route. And we'll get a 12-yard completion. So right away, we're going to work on this offense. Very, very good to see, especially after the last few games. White gets outside. He gets both the blocks he needs, and he's in the open space down to the 26. Two carries, 31 yards. Rashad White channeling his last season performances and really starting to put on a show. Now a second pass for Chambers. He gets rid of it quickly to Rashad White. Out of the backfield, it's going to go for no gain. He had to get rid of it. Blitz was coming. He felt it a little bit earlier than he needed to, but I understand why he wanted to get rid of it there. Now, play action. Going deep. It's incomplete. Flag is thrown. He was looking for Trey Palmer. And it's going to be pass interference. Defensive pass interference on Jeff Akuda. And that is going to set us up nicely inside the 10 and give us first and goal. Right away, it's a handoff. And they read that one very well. 55 was there immediately. Brings him down after two. It was Chris Woodley, the young linebacker, who makes the stop. Chambers taking it back. Under pressure, and he's going to go down to Grady Jarrett. Anytime you run those big passes out of single back where you got to take a four or five step drop like he tried to do there, and you have a guy like Grady Jarrett who can get immediate pressure up the middle, it's going gonna, it's gonna to spell disaster, and it did there. Now we need 17 yards. Chambers got time, steps up, fires to the end zone, and it's caught by Godwin, but another flag down. And I have a feeling it's going to be illegal touching because he went out of bounds. 
It is. And that's going to sort of cancel it. And we're going to have to take three. And out comes Desmond Ritter. The last time we faced this team, Ritter picked us apart. He had a huge day. But he's had a very down season since then. He's had a lot of interceptions. 15 interceptions to be exact to 18 touchdowns. So while he did have some pretty amazing play, we still know that he might not be the best. And there goes B. John Robinson and that right there. It, and that's what we're going to have to deal with. Because last time we tried to stop the run, we could barely stop the run. But we got carved up through the air. So we decided to try and be tricky and go against the pass. And now that might have left us very vulnerable here up the middle. That time we'll shut him down after four. Robinson coming off a 91 yard performance with a touchdown last week. And another handoff. We rally very nicely, by the way. Devin White and Carlton Davis. And Anthony Moore is down. That is not a good look. Hobbling over to the sideline. Servassier Dennis is going to end up having to fill in for him. Third down. Ritter under pressure. And he's got to throw it away and we'll get an early stop. And that is going to put us back on the offensive side of things. We are down at our own 13. And we go and oh my god. That was very bad. Falcons saw that one coming easily. We're going to throw out of this. A quick throw to Blake over the middle. And he'll get two yards. Which is now going to put us in a tough third and long here. Third and nine. Got two receivers. Godwin in the slot to the right. And he goes to Palmer and connects. He takes a shot, but he's able to hold on. And it's down out to the 38-yard line. A big pickup of 23. And that is a big play there from Chambers and from Palmer to get open over across the middle. And he'll connect with him again underneath. Give him another 10 and a first. Trey Palmer making plays early. We know he's got the speed to, to make people miss or to make people pay. And he did that the last two plays. And this one is to Godwin, who somehow holds on through the contact and gets it down to the 27. An absolutely amazing display of effort there by Godwin. We've seen him make a few of those in his time here in this franchise. And even though he may have been slowing down a little bit at times this season, he is still the same playmaker. As we go back to Blake for another short gain of two, Tyler Chambers right now, 7 of 7, 75 yards. We'll hand it off to White. He gets another nice lane, and he'll get six more. Third and four. Over the middle to Godwin, and another catch. And another first. This offense coming alive once again. This is what we've been waiting to see all season long as Chambers steps up he's gonna run with it and he takes this quick slide he'll only get a yard but he had a defender there they're playing a quarterback spy so I mean good effort by the Falcons to realize that yeah even though he hasn't done it much this guy can run and he will as Chambers oh man you gotta throw it away dude rookie mistake right there he had an opportunity to throw it away, decided to try and get outside of Carter. And by the time he realized that it wasn't a good decision, Carter had closed that gap, brings him down second sack of the day. And now we find ourselves in another third and long situation, just like last drive. And we're going to pretty much just hand it off to White and settle for three. Okay, first and ten. For Atlanta, and they're going to come out in pistol. Hand it off to Robinson, and Jermaine Johnson absolutely shuts it down. A big loss of three yards. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter. So first quarter, we've had a hard time 
getting in the end zone, but our offense has not had a hard time moving the ball. So there is some positivity there, even though we have not been able to put up the kind of points that we should have given the first quarter play we had. But so far, Chambers looks more comfortable. The passing game looks more comfortable. As they go to Robinson on the outside that time, they're able to take advantage of Jermaine Johnson. And uh, we know he's not the best coverage guy. Third and two. Pistol look, handoff. Robinson has to stutter, finds a crease, and he'll get to the 39. That was some very patient and good running. And there you see Anthony Moore back on the field. Good to see that he was had a quick recovery. You hate to see a guy like him go down, so really happy to see him back in the game. Ritter back to pass, looking underneath. Kyle Pitts was there, but so was Christian Izian. And he'll break that pass up, forcing the incompletion. And that is why I like Izian at corner, because he's used to playing safety. He's got the ability to play safety, which means he's just got a little bit more of a nose for the football when it comes to, to putting a hit on a player. Oh, no, let's just be honest. Not a lot of corners like to have contact, if you will. As they look for Gallagher, their young tight end, he gets a nice pickup of nine, third and one. They're going to go right back to Robinson, it looks like, and he is not going to disappoint getting him across midfield and down to the 46. Both running backs today having over 30 yards, six carries, and doing well as Algier checks in for the first time. He's going to take the handoff, and he is met immediately by Baker. And that is only going to go for a gain of one. Little offset pistol look here. And they'll go back to Robinson. And he is met right away. Anthony Moore in there right away to help bring him down. He'll get two. And now a third and long. If we can stop him here, we could potentially hold him to no points. Ritter back under pressure. He gets away from it. He's got wide open space. 30, 20, and finally dropped at the 23. Man, and that right there was a killer on this drive. He just beats Luvu around the edge. Because we know, I mean, Ritter and is like Chambers. He's sneaky fast. He doesn't always run it. But when he does, he does have the wheels to get out of harm's way and make plays with his legs. And he does it right there, keeping that drive alive for Atlanta. And now he'll back up, and that time he can't get away as Baker comes flying through and gets the first sack of the day for us. Second and 15. And now it looks like they're going to go back to the ground with a tired B. John Robinson. He gets outside. He's got enough blocks to get a couple. But our defense rallies well. Brings him down after just a gain of one. Third and 14, empty set. Ritter looking deep on the right side. It's caught. Wow, that was a good play. And it was Shelton. Jaleel Shelton, the second-year receiver that made me look stupid last time because I said he wouldn't get any playing time. And he makes a big 20-yard catch there, sort of working himself into this rotation here at Atlanta. As Robinson, nowhere to go. Shut down in the backfield. He had six for 32, and the last three carries have only equated to five yards. Uh-oh, Ritter right away looking to run, but we saw it coming, and look who it is. It's Najee Flowers. Speaking of Najee Flowers, I was doing formation subs before this game. There is nowhere where he is checked in, so he apparently is just getting subbed in at random times. I mean, I'm not against it, but... It did confuse me, and there's Jermaine Johnson with another sack. Pushing him all the way back to the 16. And we're going to force three points. And I did, by the way, let him keep his superstar. I heard all your comments, guys, and I didn't understand that it was a crappy thing, and Johnson sort of deserves it, so I let him keep it. So Johnson is now a superstar, and he gets us off the field on that drive there, holding Atlanta to just three. And with this one, they will cut the lead down to three, but we still hold on to it. So we were not able to come up with anything on the last drive. There was a, a nice play to, uh, to Trey Palmer. He had a big catch of about 12 or 15.
but then it sort of fizzled out and an incompletion ended up ending the drive so we had to punt it away for the first time and here we go first and 10 the Oluvu gets the sack but we can't get the recovery on the fumble that would have been a big time game changer for us third sack and man if only we could have recovered that that was a big play a big play that was, those are the words i'm looking for by luvu because if you watch that play back he almost bit on the play action but was quick enough to realize it was a play action and then still had time to turn around and find ritter second and 14 blitz up the middle forces a quick one it's still caught by london and he's going to force his way to the 25 a big play by drake london and really ritter holding on to that through contact as we hit the two minute warning because he took a shot i think it was ryan neal up the middle on a safety blitz just obliterated him as ritter now third and five looking for robinson got him and now going in the hurry up here 144 and ticking left both teams still have all three timeouts ritter looking deep right side it's incomplete jamel dean breaks it up good play there that does stop the clock for atlanta with 137 left second down going back right side and once again it falls incomplete kyle pitts could not haul it in with the contacts from ryan neal and if we can get ourselves a stop here we could try and add some more points before the end of this half Ritter, oh, we're sending heat. Pushed out of the pocket, goes over the middle, it's intercepted. Winfield came flying in out of nowhere and gets the pick, setting us up at midfield to potentially add some points before the end of this half. That was an incredible play by Winfield. He came flying across the field. He was covering Osborne, looks up, sees Ritter trying to put it on Robinson there and just makes an incredible athletic play and now we have a minute and a half to work with. We only need 49 yards. And we got three timeouts to do it. Chambers, right away, is not able to... I thought he caught it. Oh, I thought he caught it. But he ended up dropping it as he fell. And James Blake would have had about 10 yards there. Second and 10. Blitz coming, we pick it up. Chambers forced out of the pocket. Looks short and somehow it's caught. That time, Blake holding on. That almost was intercepted. That was a dangerous pass. Luckily, it works out for us. First and 10, the clock's still running. We haven't burned a timeout yet. I like it. Chambers is going to try to run with it. I hate it. Oh, my God. Too many hits taken. And that was definitely a waste of a play there. He abandoned that immediately. And that's going to cause us to burn a timeout with 47 seconds left. And now the crowd just got eerily quiet as Chambers... Calls for a little bit of an audible here. Must have saw something, but he takes the check down to White. It didn't pan out. We'll still get the first down. Call our second timeout. And now we have 41 seconds, but we need to hold on to this timeout to ensure we get a field goal off. Chambers looking. And never mind, we don't need it because Blake just torched the defense on that corner route, and we will get the six points we were desperately looking for this whole half to end things here at the break and now we're going to start off with the ball here thanks to a, a quick punt defense did a good job we got another sack Devin White getting the sack on the last drive to sort of put them in a tough spot and now we have a chance to extend this lead first down only gets a couple and there goes White, nice carry, pushing the pile forward. It was Woodley trying to bring him down. But he's able to push forward to the 35, get a nice chunk. And now it's just third and two. We'll go right back to him in a very easy lane for him to run through across midfield and down to the 43. Rashad White, nine for 72 on this day. He has been playing super, super good in this game, especially after having sort of a down season from what we're understanding of, of what he normally does. His chambers push out of the pocket, tries to put one into Wharton, and it just falls incomplete. And Wharton has been super quiet today. He has not been able to really get much going. 
Second and 10. Another handoff to White. Breaking past Woodley as he gets five. Another third down. Empty set for us. And Chambers, oh my God. Blake just dropped it. He straight up just dropped it. That was a bad, bad play by Blake. I mean, it was the right read from Chambers. You just gotta make that catch, dude. We're to settle for a long field goal here, 54 yards. It's up. And it's good. But we'll at least get points out of it. All right, so after the field goal that we got, we ended up swapping punts. Each team had a punt. And now the Falcons are back out here starting at the 15. They'll hand it off to Robinson. And he gets down or out to the 18, a short gain of three. Falcons looking for something here in this second half. Have not been able to move the ball much at all. We On the last drive, we actually moved the ball, but then it sputtered out like the 45. So, oh, and there's another pick. Carlton Davis undercuts the route, and he's got room. Breaks another tackle, and he's going to take it all the way back for the touchdown. Carlton Davis pulling out his running back moves, breaking tackles on his way to the house for a pick six. Beautiful job seeing that the ball was under thrown. He comes back to it. Ritter's got to put that one out there farther. But now we're going to take a commanding at least well, it should be a 20 point lead but i guess we are going to go for two and chambers is going to get it 24 to 3 21 full three touchdown lead here closing out the end of this third quarter here we go atlanta back on offense they need to do something fast they'll start with another run to robinson who spins off of vita vea on his way to a nice run of about 10 or 11 yards that, you don't see Vita Vea get beat that often. That was that was strange to see. Ritter going to throw this one. We send Heat. They pick it up nicely. He's able to find Shelton open over the middle. And he will get them across midfield. And I think that's the first time this half that Atlanta has been able to get into our territory. Let's see what they got with it. Another handoff to Robinson. Another big lane for him all the way down inside the 30 still up on his feet my gosh dude just go down 15 carries 100 yards from one of the league's best running backs i think he actually is the league's best running back and so that's not really too surprising to see him go off like that dritter now looking left able to complete it to osborne in double coverage great throw and even better catch from kj osborne gets them down to the three and it feels like the Falcons felt that it's like, hey, man, we need something right now. And they pull out all the stops. First and goal. Ritter. Pushed out. Chucks it into the turf. Kalijah Kansi was there to force the pressure. And now second and goal. They're going to go back. It looks like to Robinson. Oh, play action. And it's incomplete. No. There's no way they're going to call us for that. They are. Pass interference. I saw a little bit of a shift, but it was like at the top of the route, man. It was within five yards. That is such a bummer, man. How many times this season have teams been gifted touchdowns because of stupid penalties that get called in just the absolute worst times? And Atlanta puts points on the board. And is now going to cut that lead down to 14 with this extra point here. Wow. That's that's a crappy way to give up a touchdown. Well, we weren't able to do anything on that drive. It stalled out after a very, very errant pass by uh, Chambers. He had... A, it was, I, I think he hates Trey Palmer at this point, guys. Because Palmer was running a deep crossing route. And he had an opening once he crossed the, the middle linebacker in the deep middle. But he threw it as a bullet to the middle instead of lofting it to the left. And it ended up being batted down, almost intercepted. And if he would have just lofted it and led him out to the left side of the field, it probably would have been a big pickup of like 20 to 30 yards. And it always seems to be when Trey Palmer is, is the intended target. 
And there's a handoff to Robinson. He gets the first down. He gets closer to that midfield marker there at the 49. And now Atlanta is actually in prime territory to make a comeback here if we can't get our stuff figured out on offense. Quick snap. Ritter dumps it off to Robinson, and we do an excellent job. Who was that on the tackle? Was that Devin White? Because that was an excellent play in the, in the open field there. I didn't catch who it was, though. Second down. Ritter, a quick one again. Pitts is wide open. Oh, fumble! And oh my god, again, we can't recover it. Guys, we have got to get a figure. We have to figure this out. Two fumbles today. Both of them were not able to recover. I don't know if you want to call it bad, you know, placement by our, our defensive rallying efforts, or if you want to call it just dumb luck for the Falcons. And then they turn around and they'll end up getting a first down on the very next play to Gallagher. Tight end, second year tight end. Another handoff. Who the heck is that? Oh, it's Algier. Almost forgot he played for him. He gets a nice run of eight. Second and short. Atlanta closing in on yet another scoring drive here if we can't do something. Robinson up the middle. He sneaks past all of our defenders somehow. There's another fumble. And we still don't recover it. Oh my God. I don't know if that one was actually a fumble or not, but for the love of God, can we recover one of these? Ritter under pressure. Bronson gets back there, teaming up with Jermaine Johnson to get the sack. And that's our fifth sack of the day right there, guys. But we need another big play here. We need to shut him down. There we go. And we get it from Devin White. And now they're back in a third and 17. They essentially need a touchdown on this drive. Otherwise, it's going to be fourth down. Come on, defense. Here we go. Oh, they're going to hand it off. And Algier wide open down to the seven. And I feel like they're going to go for it. They almost have to at this point, right? Yeah, they're going to go for it. They need a touchdown here. Fourth and six. Ritter steps up. Rolls out to the right. Nobody open. Trying to find somebody and it's broken up. A valiant effort by KJ Osborne. But Najee Flowers with the hit to force it incomplete. And we're going to take over with five and a half to go. Play action from Chambers. He's looking deep. Able to connect with Godwin. And he's out to the 28. That was a big time completion there. Big time completion and a gutsy play call down on the on the uh, inside the 10 like that to go for a deep pass. Chambers over the middle, deep shot, and it's caught by Wharton. He somehow fit it between two defenders and Wharton does an amazing job of turning around to find the football. I mean, that safety probably should have intercepted it, but it's just outside of his reach. And Wharton does, an, like I said, a great job of reworking himself to the ball and making that catch. That right there might have just sealed this game for us. And there he finds Palmer. Chambers turning it on here on this final drive for us. As we've gone from our own seven down to the 18 in just over a minute and a half. And now going for the shot. He's got it to Godwin. And that's the dagger. Chris Godwin getting open, getting the touchdown. Chambers giving him an opportunity. And when the Falcons assumed we were going to just try to run this clock out, we go with our most aggressive offense yet to put them out of their misery and seal their fate for this revenge game that we desperately needed. And that is going to put us back up by 21 with just under four minutes to go in this game. And now with 37 seconds left, we're going to try. I don't even know why we're trying to run it. Just down it. Uh, okay. Well, I guess White wanted a little bit more. He didn't quite get to 100 yards, so he wanted to add to that total. But Atlanta realizes that it's over. They're not going to call a timeout. And we are going to go on a four-game win streak after looking like this team was ready to cash it in already. Tyler Chambers had an amazing day. 
turning it around completely. And we move to seven and three with a win against the Falcons to even up the record one and one and to get the revenge we desperately wanted. Heck of a performance by this team today. All right, let's take a look at these stats, huh? It's actually a good game to look at the stats for. Tyler Chambers, 123.8 passer rating. Amazing day for him. 71% on his completions, 258 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. He did take two sacks, but overall, absolutely very, very happy with his, his performance today. He needed a big bounce back in games that we were watching, and he did just that. Uh, Desmond Ritter, we, we made him out to be a fraud. He looked like Superman last the last time we played him, and Clark Kent this time, right? He just, he wasn't it. 54.1 rating, 217 yards, two interceptions, two big interceptions, and five sacks. We got to him, and we rattled him, and it, it showed to be what we needed to do the whole time. Yes, B. John Robinson went off on us, 19 for 123. But, I mean, what are, what are we going to do about it, right? It's B. John Robinson. We, we couldn't let Ritter dice us up again. So it, it is what it is. Rashad White had himself a pretty good day. He didn't hit 100 yards, but he got 11 for 83. That's a good day for White. And Taquan Samuel even had a good day, 5 for 31. Receiving Chris Godwin. Welcome back to the franchise, dude. 6 for 92. One touchdown, including, of course, that touchdown being the dagger in the coffin, that final nail for the the Falcons in the end there. Trey Palmer, he went off in the first half, four for 70. James Blake was sort of there all day long. He had that big play to open things up in the first half. Um, Taylor Warden, not often was he targeted, but his his plays made, made a difference, right? That play there in the fourth, absolutely huge connection between him and Chambers. To, to extend that drive. And then defensively, I thought we had a great day. We had five sacks. Jermaine Johnson had one and a half of them. Devin White with one. Frankie Luvu with another. Timmy Baker with one. And then, of course, Paul Bronson, another half a sack. So good there. We had an interception from Winfield and from Carlton Davis. We forced like 18 fumbles and didn't recover a single one. Luvu, Bronson, and Flowers all getting a forced fumble, but yet none of them could be recovered. But again, man, I am really starting to like Najee Flowers. All right, I really am. Let me know in the comments below if you guys think I'm being over the top with this or if we might have found ourselves a stud for the future. Before we wrap this up, we are going to go over the staff here because we do have some points to spend 86 altogether. And we are going to start attacking the player personnel here because it's something that I have put off for a long time. And I definitely shouldn't have because it is important. Um, I think here we are going to be, we could be looking for D tackles later. So we're going to go and add increased defensive. What I'm trying to do is get down to these ones down here, right? This is what I really want to get to to get all of this stuff unlocked. So now we have one side. It's going to be this and left and right ends, which is important to us. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this right away. And we still have one more we can do. And this one would be for corners, okay? Or we could do one over here for... Actually, I'm wondering if we want to do another... Oh, we can't. It's too expensive. Okay. Should have thought about that ahead of time, guy. Um, Not going to be really going after tackles. Do we want to do a trade increase for our picks? That could be very helpful. Um, or we could do a trade discount for CPU players. Trade value increase for our players. Yeah, let's do that one. Yeah, we'll do that one. There we go. So we're finally getting somewhere in the player personnel tree. And that is going to bring us to the end of the video. Um, I know this was a longer one, but I think we got a lot of good information out there. We we learned a lot more about this team. And we we got to see the, the rise back up of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And now we're sitting at first place, 7-3. and three, And we're heading into week 11 against the 49ers. One of the best teams well, the best team in the league that we just found out from the, the week eight roll. So um, we got some tough roads ahead of us, but things are looking up for us. As for this video, of course, that is all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Before you leave, if you could hit that like button, that'd be much appreciated. There are so many of you guys that are watching but are not subscribed. Like, I get it, man. Maybe you're here for the tip videos, but like, if you guys would like just sub, then you would know when they come out and it would help me out a ton. So that would be appreciated as well. Also, make sure you hit that bell notification so you know when these videos drop. 
and I will see you guys next time.